I'm Rory Boland, editor of Witch Travel Magazine, and I am here to answer all of your coronavirus-related travel questions. So if your cancellation has just happened, uh, what I would say to you is wait a little bit. Uh, companies are dealing with cancellations in departure date order, so they hopefully will get to you. Now I know there will be lots of people out there listening to me thinking, well, my grace period has been extended several times and I am out of patience. Some customers have now been waiting for more than eight weeks to get a refund. If that is you, my advice to you is to approach your card provider, explain the situation that you can't get a refund and ask them to help. It's really important to reiterate that the law for a cancelled holiday is 14 days for a refund. The law for a cancelled flight, if it's a UK or EU airline, is seven days. Now, none of the UK's major airlines or holiday companies are meeting those legal requirements. You know, there are good reasons for that. Many of them are overwhelmed by the number of refunds. Social distancing is making it more difficult for them to process them as well. However, the better companies are doing it in, I would say, around 30 days, maybe a little bit longer. The worst companies are telling people anywhere from 2021 to beyond that. And so if you're working with a good company, hopefully 30 days, six weeks, you'll get your money back. With a bad company, as I said before, you may end up with your card provider. So an air bridge is basically an agreement between this country and another country that we will not quarantine um, holidaymakers or visitors between those countries. So we had an air bridge to France announced fairly recently. That was canned quite quickly. We've now had an air bridge to Greece announced. I'm afraid that probably will be canned quite quickly as well. It is really, really confusing at the moment to know when summer holidays will take place because the messages from tour operators and from airlines and from the government is very, very different depending on who you listen to. For me, I won't be booking any summer holidays until kind of three conditions are met. Um, I want to be able to get travel insurance, that's really important. I want to know that in the destination I'm traveling to, that the hotels, the restaurants and the bars are open. I don't just want to be stuck in my private rental for a week. And I also want to know that I won't have to quarantine when I return. Now, I think those things, those kind of measures will be met this summer and we will get a chance to go abroad, um, but we are are not at that stage yet so my advice for now is don't book to Greece or indeed anywhere else abroad until we get a clearer picture. I think there's a really good chance that we will be able to take a UK holiday uh, this summer in August or September. Uh, the government has said that it is looking to open hotels and other leisure facilities at the earliest by the 4th of July. Now that doesn't mean that on the 5th of July you'll be able to turn up in Devon or Cumbria to take a holiday um, and I certainly wouldn't book a UK holiday at the moment but it does give us a little bit of hope that if everything goes in the right direction, if infection rates stay down and some of the other measures Measures, the tests that the government has announced uh, to check that we're, we're staying on top of the virus, that we should later in this year be able to go on holiday in the Cape. So new witch research has found that trust amongst consumers in the travel industry is at a seven year low. It's shocking, but not surprising, given the abysmal way that many holiday companies and airlines have treated customers over the last two months. What I would say is there is a difference between individual holiday companies and individual airlines. Not all have treated passengers or customers so badly. Uh, so we've heard lots of good reports about Jet2 uh, versus very bad reports about Ryanair. We've heard that Trail finders and on the beach, while they haven't been perfect in refunding customers, have done a much better job than TUI. And for example, the, the smaller operators and the specialist operators there's a good two dozen of them that have been doing the right thing all along. And, and you can find details of them on witch.co.uk. So what I would say is yes, you know, trust is really low in the travel industry, but when it does come back to booking again, book with those companies that have done the right thing this time around, because you can be more assured that they'll do the right thing next time around if something goes wrong with your trip.
With 9 million customers' details potentially leaked, I'm afraid the answer is they may not be. Um, what we really need to see from EasyJet at the moment is very quick action to let customers know if they have been directly affected. Regardless of that, if you are an EasyJet customer, if you've booked a flight with them in, in recent years, um, you should go ahead and change your password. And indeed, change your password with any associated accounts or with any accounts where you use the same password. Beyond that, it's also worth keeping an eye on your bank account, just in case a scammer has got your details um, and is able to take some of your money, you'll be able to act as quickly as possible uh, to prevent that situation getting any worse.